Hi everybody, it's Royal Ruby, and I just wanted to do a quick video. I'm getting ready to go to Pennsylvania tomorrow. Um, I won't be home until Saturday, so I wanted to real quick give you a, a video. This video is going to be all about um, comparing the pros and cons of a minivan versus a cargo van. Uh, when I say cargo van, I mean like a Ram Promaster, uh, a, a Mercedes Sprinter, um, uh, Ford Transit, uh, Nissan sells a cargo van, and then your your normal minivan, which could be what I have, a Dodge Grand Caravan, it could be a, a Sienna, it could be a Kia, uh, it could be um, a town and country, whatever type of van you have is a passenger minivan. So this video is going to give you a comparison because when I first started doing this, when I, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't have any idea. I didn't know what any of the terms meant that people talked about. I had no idea. I had to watch a lot of YouTube videos and I interacted with a lot of people online to find out what would be the best way to, to go about this. Because the actual main difference um, between the minivan and the cargo van, I'm going to put my light back on, is that the cargo van is going to cost more, okay? <laughs> That's the main thing. My minivan was given to me by my mom, so it was a free gift to me. I did pay to put the kit inside the van, the Nomad kit that I put in. But the actual cost was nothing, zero for my van. Um, but if the average cost, if you're going to buy a used minivan, you're going to spend about three to four grand on a used minivan and with relatively reasonable mileage. But if you go to buy a cargo van, even if you buy a used cargo van with reasonable mileage, you're going to spend at a minimum 15000 Then if you want to go into something new, you better be ready to put out 42000 50000 for a Sprinter. I mean, that's a lot of money. And then you have to, if you're going to have it built out by a builder, I mean, I had mine priced out because I was going to build one out, buy one and build it out. My build that I wanted, I shopped three different builders. It was from forty to sixty were the prices that I got for my build. Actually, one of them was almost eighty. So figure you got forty two thousand. I was looking at a Promaster, a brand new Promaster. So I would have spent forty two thousand on the van itself, and say fifty thousand for the build. That's ninety thousand dollars. I mean. Keep in mind, guys, this is titled property, okay? This is not fee simple ownership like a house. As soon as you drive that vehicle off the parking lot of that dealership, you're going to depreciate at least 12000 sometimes even more. It just depends on the type of vehicle you're buying at the time. So this is a huge deal, you know? And I would say take that as your first consideration. Now, if you have a lot of money and it doesn't matter, then get what you want and just build out this beautiful cargo van. You have lots, you'll be able to stand up in it. You'll have more room. And that is, a, that is, you know, a good option if you have a lot of money to just throw around. But if you're like me and you're going to retire maybe in eight years and you want to keep your money for your retirement years, you don't want to frivolously just throw your money away you want to do what's best what's going to be the most economical but also it's going to give you a comfortable experience so I chose the minivan it was given to me by my mom and I decided that I was going to spend the money and convert it so the other option of course is gas mileage in my minivan I average about 17 to 18 miles in the city and 25 to 27 miles on the highway. It just depends on the amount of hills and stuff in the terrain that I'm traveling on. With a cargo van, you're going to be getting about 15 if you're lucky in the city and about 20 if you're lucky in the highways. And I know because I checked these out and I also drove. I drove a Ram Promaster. I drove a Ford Transit and I drove a Mercedes Sprinter. So I drove all three of them. And I also got all the statistics from all the different dealerships that, and I was told, I was driving newer vans. These weren't older vans. Um, so yeah, that's a big difference too. With the price of gas going up to five fifty nine a gallon over in California, that's what it is. That's a big, big chunk of money every time you fill up your tank 
at the gas station. The other thing is just the ability to be stealth. When I park my minivan, I can go into a town. I could park anywhere. I could go into an apartment complex parking lot. I could go and park on a little street somewhere. And my, you know, reflectix go in all my windows and I'm totally blacked out. I can have every light on inside my van and you will not know I'm sleeping in my van. A ProMaster or a high top cargo van, not only is it higher, but it's longer. So they're harder to park because you need a bigger space to park them in and they stick out like a sore thumb. You know, they're very, very obvious because a lot of your um, contractors use those. So it's unusual if an officer is driving by in his cop car, he sees a plumber van sitting outside at night along a residential street. He's going to question that because it's not time for plumbers to be working. You know, it's nighttime. So he may knock on that van. Whereas I'm in a minivan. I mean, how many soccer moms just park along the road? They go in their house or maybe they're visiting a neighbor or a friend or whatever. I mean, it's just not going to alarm a cop as much as a big cargo van is going to shock them. Now, if you're just there for one night, they probably won't even stop, but you never know. And to me, having that security and knowing that I'm not going to get a knock, that makes me feel pretty good because it's really upsetting and I've had it already when I wasn't a knock where they were telling me to move, but I had people come in the middle of the night and just terrorize me by banging on my van. And that's a scary experience. So you don't want that to happen. So the more stealth you are, the better. The next thing I, I would say is the handling and the stability on the road. When I drove the higher top cargo vans, I found that the wind would grab a hold of them and pretty much toss me all over the highway. I just didn't, maybe once your build is in there and it's heavier, it's not as bad, but I could feel my van just moving and the winds weren't that strong the days that I drove these vans, but it was pretty hard for me. And I felt like I was driving a truck, you know? Whereas when I drive my minivan, Let's face it, these are designed for soccer moms. You know, these are like cars. You're, it's like you're driving a car. It's very luxurious. It's very comfortable. You know, it's just easier to maneuver. It's easier to park. It's easier to get in and out of spaces and tight spaces and McDonald's drive through whatever you're doing. It's just easier. I drove a school bus for the Philadelphia School District, Methacton Township School District, back in like, I don't know, 30 some years ago. 66 passenger bus I drove and I maneuvered that puppy around the streets of Philadelphia and I did a pretty good job so I could do it you know if I had to but I really don't want to <laughs> I'd rather just be able to drive around and and not have it difficult so that's another thing the other thing I want to mention is there's better insulation in a minivan because your van, a minivan, is built for passengers. So you're going to have better insulation. So you're going to keep the heat in, keep the cold in when you need to keep it in. It's just going to be better insulated because it's built for passengers. So once you take all the seats out, all that insulation is still there. When you get a cargo van, you have to insulate it. You have to use like Havelock wool or something like that in the walls and the ceilings and the floors. And that's, that's a lot of money. Even if you're doing it DIY, it's not cheap to insulate your van. So that's part of the expense, you know, that you're going to have to pay out. Whereas a minivan, you don't have to do any of that. Like I put a carpet down on the floor just because I wanted to, you know, how you have where those little seat belts go in and stuff. I wanted to cover those up. But that's all I did. And that was a piece of carpet I had cut from you know, when they put carpet in my house, it didn't cost me anything. So yeah, I feel like that, that is better too, the insulation. So right now it's like, I don't know, maybe 30, 49 degrees, no, 40 degrees outside. It's about 55 degrees inside my van because it's that much better insulated inside. Um, so, oh, the other thing about the bigger high tops, they're easier to flip. They're easier to flip over. You know, they're going to flip quicker than a, a minivan. A minivan is lower to the ground, so that's the other thing. Um, and then, of course, there is the pro that we talked about. Standing room is wonderful. But do you want to pay that kind of money for standing room only? I don't think so. For me, just to be able to stand up in your van, when most of your time is going to be spent outside of your van in nature, that's a huge, huge 
you know, pro that I can do without because I don't usually hang out in my van that long. I mean, I'm in here to do my uh, sleeping and have my coffee in the morning. And then once I'm done with that, I'm outside. I'm taking Ted for a walk and I'm taking him for a run or I'm making my breakfast. You know, I'm out hiking. I'm exploring. I'm doing videos for you guys. I'm not sitting around in my van. The only time I do that is if it's like raining outside um, or something like that. So truthfully, that's not a big a big thing, a big push. So all in all, after all this research that I did, I came to the conclusion that the minivan was the best investment for conversion to a camper van. And I'm a realtor. I own my own real estate company. I am actually a broker and an owner of my own company for the last 35 years. So I'm all about investing. I'm all about money, okay? <laughs> So I look at everything that way, and especially a, a vehicle because it's titled property. You know, it's not like a house where you get a deed. It's, it's titled. So it literally depreciates. As soon as you take it off the lot, you lose money on it, and it's not going to gain value. However, I can tell you that my minivan, since I put the conversion in the van, you know, I bought that kit from freewaycamperkit.com, which cost 3400 to put the kit in. I had an offer for this van. It's a 1996, 117,000 miles Dodge Grand Caravan. I had a guy call me on the phone and offered me $6,600 for my van cash with the kit inside of it. And the refrigerator would stay and the stove or the, um, the sink, but all of my other stuff would come out. Like all my personal belongings, my stove, my butane stove, all that would come out. All my curtains would come out. All my Reflectix would come out. Everything would come out. All he would be getting was the kit, the refrigerator compressor, 12-volt refrigerator, and the sink with running water with the pump, and the bed and all the, the pieces, the table and all that, $6,600. So in that case, I did gain value. You know, I, I appreciated. But that's just because I turned it into a camper van. Now, if you just put the seats back in the van and sell it as a regular van, you're not going to appreciate because you're just selling a used passenger van. And it's like anything else. You're not going to get you're not going to get that much for it. You're lucky if you're going to get $1500 for it if it's an older van like mine. So yeah, that's my uh quick video I wanted to do for you guys and I wish somebody would have done this for me when I was shopping because it does help you to figure out uh, what you want to do. Now, if you've got all kinds of money to just throw around, get the freaking ProMaster, get the Sprinter, get the nice van. I did have those builds, you know, priced out for me, and I know how much it costs to build. Now, if you can do it yourself, it's going to save you a lot of money, but it's also going to take you at least six months to build out your van. You know, if you're working a full-time job and you're building out a van, that takes a long time. This little thing was ready in a weekend. I put the kid in, loaded up. I was camping that Monday, you know, so <laughs> it was just like that. That's how fast it was. So in my opinion, this is still the best, the best way to go. And now I real quick want to finish my review because I did a review for you of these lights before, but I want to do another one because I forgot to show you how they work in the van at night. And so now it's dark out, it's dusk. And I purposely did this video later so that you could see how they work. Um, like I told you in the last video, these are motion lights and they are by Intelligent Nightlight. They cost $29.95. You get six in a box. They come with three USB cords because they're charged with USB and one remote control. Now the remote control will operate, will operate the lights when you're in the on mode. This is the brightness of this light. Now it will go down in brightness with your remote. You could take it all the way to 40%, 10%, but they're really bright. As you can see, you know, you could put these up on your ceiling of your van. Well, you can't put them up on the ceiling because they're magnetic. So what's happening here? If you put them in auto mode, which is what it's in now, I put one back here at the back of my van. I don't know if you can see it. 
but it's right there at the back of my van. It's on my tailgate so that when I open my tailgate, I have it on motion so that that comes on. So if it's really dark outside, I can, you know, go back here to my refrigerator at night and that light is going to come on when I'm back there. Or if I lift my tailgate, that light is going to come on with motion. So that's how I have it set. The one that I have down, down at the bottom by my Jackery, that's also set on motion. And I have another one at my front, my side door of my van when I come into the van, that's also set on motion. So when I come into my van, that motion light comes on and I can see my whole van floor is lit up so that I can, you know, kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. I'm also going to use these when I'm out on BLM land because I'm going to put them underneath my van because they have this cool magnet that you can just stick them under your van because usually you have metal under your van. And when a rodent or something goes under your van, they're going to light up. You could also put them under the hood of your van so that if any critters get up into your hood, you know, where your engine and stuff is, it'll light up. Now it comes with this other magnet. So you can stick this part onto, um, like say the ceiling of your van. And then this part is magnetic also, and it'll stick there. But this part here, what I found, it's not real sticky. So when I want to do like back here at the back where I put that one up, I used Velcro because that makes it stay there. It won't come off. I just put a little Velcro here and a little Velcro um, on the other side. I put Velcro where I want to stick it and I put Velcro here and then I, the male and the female. And then I just put the metal together and I hung it up there. And as you can see, I mean, it's pretty bright see it up there it comes on right there that's the light and I only have my battery powered lights on right now I also have these cool lights that I just got now these are by Alvantor and they're little clothes pins and I have them stuck on my bungee cord and they're battery powered they use three double A I believe it is batteries and they blink or they're steady I like them steady and I just have them here because these are for my Alvantor tent. Alvantor sent me these because I did some videos and promoted their business. So they sent me two sets of these for free. So I'm going to be using those in my Alvantor tent when I'm set up in BLM land. But I just hung them up here so you guys could see how bright they are. Because right now with these battery lights back here, these pom-pom lights, and these battery lights, and then of course my motion light back there, I'm not using any USB power. I'm not pulling down any power from my Jackery. So that's kind of nice because, you know, when you're out there on BLM land, you don't have any hookup for electricity. So I don't want to use any of my USB fairy lighting. I'm only going to use those once in a while. Most of the time I'm going to have my little Coleman light is also battery. And then down here... I have another one of those lights and you can see it comes on when you put motion on it and that's all the lighting I'm going to have inside the van because I'm going to try to not use my power so much. Um, so anyway guys that's another review on these lights because the last video I did I forgot to turn them on. <laughs> that was kind of silly. I mean how are you going to see how they look? When I don't even turn them on. But yeah, you get six in a box. I'm going to order another box. They are $29.95. They're not cheap, but they're really good quality. And I think they're awesome. I don't understand. Let's see. Once you turn them on... There they go. So here's what happens. Here's your remote, okay? Off, on. And then you can adjust the power. 40%, 10%, see they get dimmer, and 180%, and 100%. They get brighter, and then off. So now they're off. Or you could set them on auto, and then they're on motion. It's when you go in front of them. But I just think they're awesome. I love them. 
and I'm so glad I got them. I'm going to order another box. So I wanted to do another review for you guys so you could see how they worked. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not going to be able to do any videos for a couple of days because I'm going to be going to Pennsylvania. I'm going to go take my mom to the doctor. But I hope this was helpful. It was for me when I first started doing research. Well, actually, I had nobody to tell me anything. I couldn't even find a YouTube channel that would break it down for me to give me the pros and the cons. Because most people, you know, they, they're kind of negative about minivans. You know, they feel like it's, it's not as cool or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what. I have a really cool setup. And I enjoy my camping experience in this little van. And I'm only five foot one, so probably that makes a big difference too. Like if you're a really big person, minivan might not be for you. You might want to go for the bigger van. But I'm a five foot one little girl, so I don't need a big van. This is perfect for me. And when me and my son travel together, it's perfect for the two of us. I mean, we travel very comfortably. I put it in double bed mode. We have plenty of room. We set up our tent out back. We cook outside. We have a really nice setup. So I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can um, see some of my travels as I go on my BLM land excursions coming up in January. And also ring the bell if you want to be notified when I'm doing videos. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe guys so make sure you click that button. And I'd love to come into your home every day whenever I have a video and we can have a chat. Okay, so God bless you and have a great day and I'll see you soon. Take care.